Hey, I'm Mike and this is Porty's Chop Shop. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna go over the steps I took to first test an unknown fuel level sending unit and then also retrofit it into a tank that it's not supposed to be in so that I can match my dash gauge for the fuel level along with the tank that I'm using. So let me quickly jump into a few of the parts and then we'll get into how I tested it and retrofitted it into my tank. So one thing that um, my friend Danny will definitely remind me of forever and ever is how many times I accidentally ran out of gas on the way up to Canby uh, a couple years ago. So this piece, I looked around and I went on Summit and I tried looking for a different, a few different options, but um, just going with the factory one that goes with the fuel gauge in the truck is probably the best solution. Let me adjust this camera real quick. So this guy is just the fuel sending unit for the um, Datsun 620. This unit here, this is the filler neck for the S13 tank that I'm using. Um, I cut that neck and rotated it 90 degrees um, roughly. So anyways, the, the reason I say not to do this, let me see if I can grab it. If you just look in there, there's like a coating inside of this. It's like a um, plated or zinc coated steel tube. So when I welded through there, I burnt off all that coating. So the chances of this thing rusting increases, but it's gonna be inside of a sealed fuel neck and um, you know, just the life of this vehicle, I'm, I'm highly doubting that this piece rusts out um, or causes any significant problems. And if so, I have a fuel sock and a fuel filter, so I'm not too worried about it. But um, yeah, just, just um, I don't suggest doing this, but I did it, so there you go. All right, now that we're over here at the truck, um, let me show you again real quick what that um, fuel neck is gonna look like on here. Where are those bolts? There you go. So that's like that, bolts in place, using the factory gasket. So then I can have a nice fuel cap right here and it's up against the bulkhead right here. Um, still allows room for all of the bracing and all that and um, I can just fill up like normal. Looking forward to that. That fuel cell was a huge pain in the butt that I had before. Let's get this fuel hanger out and uh, show you what problems I'm dealing with there. So if you guys don't remember my very first video ever, the uh, bulkhead wiring system from Racetronics, that's that wired up in there. So these two spare wires right there hanging off, those are just waiting for that fuel sending unit to go in. So now if you take a look in the tank here, um, this is where I pulled that fuel sending unit out of. Um, there's a little baffle box in there and that just ensures that the um, fuel pump always has fuel no matter what. So if you're sloshing around doing slidey boy things or whatever, then you're going to maintain um, fuel on the fuel pump so it can uh, never start out. So the problem is that fuel hanger needs to move up and down a little bit and it's going to run into that. So that's the real issue I'm dealing with. I'm thinking I might just bend the... Um, fuel hanger but let's go figure it out all right you may or may not have heard me talking about this here fuel sending unit um, I need to get it installed in the s13 gas tank so I can be done with this and forget all about it and just have it completely done uh, it's holding up the rear end for me so the first way is just to ensure that the swipe works on the meter itself so as I raise and lower the float in here, so all I'm doing is moving this through its range of between empty and full. Ha, 620, nice. Uh, so then you just make sure that it goes, um, and then check that against the factory manual. Which we can see is 35 ohms uh, from the factory at half level. That's the only information that we get on that one. So then the next way to test that this is gonna work with the dash uh, before I go chopping it up and putting it into my new tank is to actually hardwire it to the dash and make sure that works. So let me show you how I did that. Okay, I doubt this will show up, but this hasn't been functioning in so long. There's actually a dust bunny on the fuel needle. <laughs> so really gotta get this thing working. All right, let's hook that up. So uh, I took a positive from a 12 volt battery that goes in 
through the input to the cluster, the whole 12 volt input, and then the output from the gauge goes to another wire. And then that wire is uh, grounded basically through this whole resistor mechanism. So let me see if I can show that. Okay, so that wire comes to this whole unit and then it goes in through the feed, through the resistor coil, and then out to ground, and that ground is just ground. So what you do is that 12 volt signal is being altered by the, um, the resistance to ground through this thing. So hardwire that, ground the other side to the other side of the battery, and then let's see if it works. Wow, should have done a time lapse. Well, it's really slow, but it's going to E, what would be like the designated bottom of the tank. So what I'm gonna do now is raise that float and see what happens. So I have the float fully up in the top position that it can be in. So it has the least resistance to ground now. And you can see the needle rises up to full. So now I, if I can get this set into my gas tank properly, then I'll have a functioning fuel sending unit. You're welcome, Danny. All right, last I uh, left off, I was just testing the fuel gauge to make sure that that operated correctly. And we got to go ahead on that. So now I can cut it up and get it attached to the fuel hanger and then get it into the fuel tank and then the fuel tank can be done. So let's go about jumping into that. So what I need to do is I need to attach this into here somehow, preferably with the arm swinging in this direction because that faces the um, highest part of the tank back there. How I'm going to do that, I have no idea yet. So I'll figure that out and update you. All right, here's my brilliant warranty voiding. Um, nine week waiting idea. So I'm gonna chop that section that I marked off right there, which will give me a flat surface right there that I can rivet a bracket to. And then I'm going to rivet that bracket on this piece, like I said, right here. So um, I'm just cutting that again so that it, it doesn't hit the um, bracket that I'm bolting it to. Um, so let's give it a shot. All right, after some very careful cutting, we're left with just the fuel sending unit without its little hat on it. I don't know if you can see that micro thin wire right there, but I have to make sure not to clip that or else I'm gonna have a heck of a time getting it back on there. Um, so I got that, cut a little piece of aluminum bar and I got my um, fuel hanger here prepped. So I just realized I don't have a rivet gun, so I gotta go get one. So here's what I was able to make. I bent up an aluminum bracket and then riveted this to it. Um, I cut all the excess hat off of the top of this piece and then shaped that aluminum bracket. So, You can see my mark of where I want that to land. Transfer it over to this side. Oops. There we go. Just got to get it to clear everything inside the tank. So I'm going to have to bend this arm around a little bit to make it work and then just secure it to here. But I can't feel my toes, so I'm going to continue this tomorrow. All right, I had left off in the freezing cold last night. <laughs> um, so let me show you what I got so far. So I was able to get the bracket bolted on there. I don't know how well you'll be able to see that. Put a couple of bolts there, there and there. And then, uh, so now I have a complete fuel hanger with the Walbro 450, the 240SX um, fuel hanger, the Racetronics bulkhead wiring system 
and then a factory Datsun 620 float on here. So let's take a look at how it works and see how I got to bend these arms to get it into that um, tank. All right, so my biggest concern here really is making sure that the empty um, or the E indicator on the fuel gauge is the most sorted out. So um, if full doesn't indicate as accurately as empty does, then that's not gonna be a big deal for me because then I have gas, I don't care. So what I, what I wanna know is when I'm out of gas. So as you can see right here, these are the stops. So there's the empty stop and there's the full stop. So this arm swings up, that hits full, that stops. Then it see how it's not hitting empty with it resting on the ground like this. So that's about where the E thing is. So what I'm, I'm gonna start with is by bending this elbow right here until that flow hits the bottom right where empty is. So I'm gonna set this up and do that, see, uh, and then we'll go from there. say it's just about perfect all right now the last step is to fit this in to the gas tank and then maybe I can peek through the fill hole there to um, see how or if hopefully not but how it's interfering with the um, with the baffle um, so I'll drop this in there and then see if I can't snap a picture inside there or not so we'll see what happens So if we look through the fuel fill plug, we see that the float isn't touching the bottom of the tank, even though the meter is indicating E. So this needed to be bent, which I did off camera, so that we know that it's indicating E when it's at the bottom. All right, there we have it. Um, that's as good as it's gonna get. The um, Hopefully that picture comes through. Um, if it sucks, I'm sorry. It's, um, so I fastened this uh, Datsun 620 fuel sending unit to the 240SX fuel hanger. Um, this hits the bottom of the tank right as it hits E on here, and it doesn't quite go all the way up to full, but like I said, the real trick is making sure I don't run out of gas. So. Um, Last thing that's left to do is just um, attach the wires for the fuel sending unit right here. And I think I'm gonna have to solder those. And I won't do that on camera because I don't want to encourage you to solder on your vehicles. So um, that's it. Another, uh, another video done, another step closer to getting this thing started. This pretty much sums up the gas tank other than installing it and um, bolting it down. So once again, thanks for watching.